Welcome to the weekly Comic Web Old Time Radio Program podcast. We sell old time radio programs, Golden Age comics in PDF format, and we have other free podcasts. Visit comicweb.com for more information or find us on Facebook and iTunes. Well, it's a couple days before Christmas, so this week's podcast is an episode of Harold Perry called Santa at the Children's Party. It first aired on December 22nd, 1950. The Harold Perry Show. <laughs> Now, Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, there's a white mantle of snow over the little town of Melrose Springs, and the air is cold and frosty. But there's warmth and good cheer in the hearts of young and old alike for Christmas is only two days away. Let's look in on the home of Honest Harold, where we find his mother just putting the presents under the Christmas tree. Dashing through the snow on a one-horse open sleigh. And now, this is for Harold. And this one's for Raymond. Through the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells on bobsleds ring, making spirits bright. Uh, hello, Harold. Hello, Mother. Well, well, look at all those wonderful presents under the tree. Christmas is certainly a grand time of the year. It certainly is. Yeah, it makes you love everybody. I even love my boss, Stanley Peabody. <laughs> oh, have a Well, I do, Mother. Well, got to get downtown now. We're having an important meeting of our reindeer club this afternoon. That reindeer club was a wonderful idea of yours, Harold. Thank you, Mother. I just thought it'd be nice if some of us fellows got together and gave the children in this town a big Christmas party. A lot of presents, of Santa Claus and everything. Well, that's the true Christmas spirit, Harold. Who's in your club? Well, there are four of us, reindeer. Uh, Prancer, that's me. <laughs> Dasher, that's old Doc Yancey. Comet is Pete the Marshal. And Stanley Peabody is Donder. Should have been Donder Head. <laughs> now, 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 remember your Christmas spirit. Of course, Mother. At the meeting this afternoon, we're going to elect a Santa Claus. But the election is just a formality. They'll probably pick me unanimously. The whole club was my idea. <laughs> Won't that be nice? My son, Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> well, better get started, Mother. May not be home for dinner after the meeting. I've got some shopping to do. Well, I'll leave the front door unlocked for you. Oh, don't bother, Mother. Remember, I'm going to be Santa Claus. I'll just come down the chimney. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells. <laughs> Quiet, 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 fellas. Uh, Meeting of the Order of Noble Reindeer, Herd One of Melrose Springs will kindly come to order. (laughs) Brother Comet will now call the roll. Brother Comet, that's you, Pete. Oh, yeah. Uh, Some Comet. Uh, Let me see here now, where's my list? Uh, Oh, uh, uh, Brother Prancer. That's me, present. Uh, Brother Dasher. Brother Dasher. That's you, Doc. Oh, yes, yes, I'm here. <laughs> Ye gods, Doc, can't you even remember your name? Oh, you're out of order, Harold. Well, a reindeer, I move we send Prancer to bed without his oat. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Brother Donder? I, Stanley Peabody, am present. And listen to Prissy Pants. Brother Comet? Brother Comet? That's you, Pete. Oh, I didn't see myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get down to business, fellas. Fellow reindeer, I am happy to report that our preparations for the Christmas party are going full speed ahead. And we're getting a lot of letters from the children telling us what they want in their Christmas stocking. Uh, Brother Pancher, here's a letter from a kid I'd like to read. Oh, good. Go ahead, Doc. (coughs) Dear Reindeer Club, when I wake up Christmas morning, what I want to find in my Christmas stocking is Linda Darnell. (laughs) What smart alley kid wrote that? I did. Stop. Only joking, Harold. Oh, I'm right behind you on this Christmas party. In fact, I think you deserve a vote of thanks for all the hard work you've done. Well, thank you, Doc. And I'd like to say to all of you that I've never worked with a nicer bunch of reindeer. 
Brother Prancer. Yes, Brother Donder. Uh, Stanley. I suggest we elect our Santa Claus now. Uh, good idea. I would like to nominate a man I think really deserves the job. Uh, go right ahead, Stanley, old friend. Hello, reindeer. This man is one of our leading citizens of Melrose Springs, respected and loved by all. Uh... The man I refer to is none other than I, Stanley Peabody. <laughs> I've been double-crossed. I move the nominations be closed. Just a minute, Stanley. This whole thing was my idea. I ought to be Santa Claus. You have. Huh. Look, the only qualification you have for Santa Claus is that you carry your own padding. Oh. What a Santa Claus you'd make with those skinny legs. They look like two pipe cleaners with knees. <laughs> now, Donder. Scarecrow. Now, Prancer. Uh -huh. I move we postpone the election till tonight when we've all cooled down. What? Second. And let's don't forget the spirit of Christmas, Brother Reindeer. Merry Christmas, Hemp. Merry Christmas, Stanley. I hope he trips over a Yule log. Certainly uh, uh, crowded downtown. Everybody's getting ready for a Merry Christmas. Hello, Mrs. Della Chapa. Uh... I don't feel very merry, I can tell you that. I'd be Santa Claus right now if it wasn't for that Peabody. I went and bought him a hand-painted necktie for Christmas. Ought to return it and get my 98 cents back. Oh, well. Why, Harold! Huh? Oh, hello, Theodora. Oh, I feel so Christmassy, don't you? The snow, all those decorations in the windows, and the happy music. Yeah. <laughs> What's the matter, Harold? Something wrong with my little holly berry. Well. <laughs> you know, I wanted to be Santa Claus at the children's Christmas party. Didn't your reindeer club pick you? Well, Stanley Peabody wanted to be Santa Claus, too, so now we have to have an election tonight. Oh, Harold, that's nothing to worry about. I'm sure your friends will vote for you. Well, I guess so. Sure. And you'll make a wonderful Santa Claus, Teddy Bear. Yeah. <laughs> And I hope Santa will come to my house. I've got some mistletoe over the door. <laughs> you have? Uh-huh. And you know what mistletoe is for? Sure do. You stand on your toes and then we both missile. <laughs> yeah, we have. <laughs> oh, Harold. Uh, well, I have some shopping to do. Uh, Here's a present for you, Sandy Wabby. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <sighs> Wonderful girl. Hello, Harold. Oop. There's Doc. And his horse and buggy. Better make sure the old horse doctor is going to vote for me tonight. Hey, just a minute, Doc. Oh, sir, the moon. What is it, Brother Prancher? Well, Brother Dasher, I just wondered... Look me... at my horse, Silver Moon Harold. Don't she look sweet with that mistletoe in her ear? Yeah. <laughs> mistletoe? Doc, there aren't any other horses in this town for her to kiss. I know, but she goes around kissing automobiles. Yeah. <laughs> it's the spirit of the thing. <laughs> oh, brother. Doc, about the election... You know, my animals are so excited they love Christmas time. Oh? I'm uh, out now buying their presents. What are you whispering about, Doc? Well, I don't want Silver Moon to hear me. Huh? She's only 24 years old, but she still believes in Santa Claus. <laughs> Doc, please, I want I just don't know what to get for Arthur, my goat. Your goat? Yeah. Last year, I got him an erector set, but he ate it. Oh. <laughs> Doc, will you listen to me for a moment? I want to talk to you about the election this evening. I suppose you're going to vote for me as Santa Claus. Aren't you, old pal? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> now, look, Doc. Get up, Silver Moon. <laughs> <laughs> it's the hog with bows of holly. la 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 Old Doc Yak Yak certainly thinks he's smart. For two cents, I'd tell his horse there isn't any Santa Claus. <laughs> Say, maybe I'd better drop into the marshal's office a minute and make sure Pete's going to vote for me tonight. 
Hello, Pete. Oh, hello, Brother Prancher. Uh, Pete, about the election tonight, I suppose you're... How do you like this little Christmas tree I'm decorating here? Oh, it looks beautiful. Pete, I... I'm fixing this tree from a prisoner, Orville the Dip. Orville the Dip? Uh, When did you arrest him? Oh, I didn't arrest him. He broke into jail last night. (laughs) Broke in? I've never heard of a crook doing that. Oh, Orville isn't a crook anymore, Harold. He's retired. Oh. Poor old fella. Gets kind of lonesome for jail around the holidays. Uh Yeah, likes to be in familiar surroundings. Uh Pete, it's against the law to keep a man in jail if he hasn't committed a crime. I know that. I've put Orville out three times, but he keeps breaking back in. (laughs) Carol, you'd like Orville. He's one of the nicest ex-safe crackers you ever met. Uh, Pete, what I came in here... Excuse me, I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, hello, Orville. I'd like you to meet an old friend of mine, Honest Harold. Honest Harold, meet Orville the Dip. Very, very happy to make your acquaintance, sir. Uh, How do you do? How do you like the tree, Orville? It's lovely. It'll look beautiful in my cell. What a happy yuletide this will be. Oh, I'm glad to do it, Orville. You're very kind. This is just like being home for Christmas. Oh, (laughs) Shaw. Oh, Pete. I want to return your watch. His watch? Yes, I lifted it when you brought my lunch in, Pete. I'm sorry. Lifetime habits are hard to break, you know. (laughs) Forget it, Orville. Oh, thank you. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'll return to my cell now. (laughs) Orville took my watch. Ain't that a doozy? What a jail. Pete, look, are you going to vote for me tonight? You know, he must have lifted it while I was pouring his Sanka. Oh. <laughs> oh, he's a sly one. Pete! <laughs> you know what he did yesterday, Harold? <laughs> he lifted my handcuffs. <laughs> he must have lifted your brains, too. I'll see you at the meeting tonight. <laughs> Recorder, I will now count the votes for Santa Claus. Have you all put your ballots in the hat, Harold? Mine's in. Stanley Peabody? My vote is cast. My vote is cast. Uh, Pete? In the slot, boy. Uh, well, mine's in. Holes of cold. Uh, let me see here now. Hope I get it. I just gotta be Santa Claus. One vote for Stanley Peabody. Oop. I bet he's gonna get it. One vote for Harold Hamp. Well, I wonder who's gonna get the next vote. <laughs> One vote for Alf Landon. What? <laughs> It's for Harold Hemp. Oh, yeah. And so is the last vote. It's Harold Hemp for Santa Claus by a snow slide. Thank you, thank you, fine fellas. Congratulations, Hemp. I guess you won the election. Oh, well, don't feel bad, Stanley. You carried Maine and Vermont. Gonna be Santa Claus. I can just see those kids at the Christmas party tonight. The smiles on their little faces when I hand them their presents. Good evening, Mr. Ham. Uh, ooh, Orville the Dip. I mean, uh, hello. <laughs> hey, what are you doing out? We need some more Christmas lights for the tree. I'm going to drop in one of the stores and pick some up. <laughs> But he will, too. I heard you singing. You must be in good spirits tonight, Mr. Hemp. Oh, yes, yes, I am, Orville. You see, I was just elected to play Santa Claus for the children tomorrow night. Oh, that's wonderful, Mr. Hemp. Please accept my congratulations. Well, thank you, Orville. I can't tell you how I envy you. Huh? Well, this may seem strange to you, but the one ambition of my life has been to play Santa Claus to a group of happy children. Oh, it has? You see... I've had rather a lonely life, Mr. Hemp. No family, no friends. Oh, I see. Yes, the way of the transgressor is bitter and lonely, especially at this season of the year. One misses the warmth of friendship and the laughter of little children. Yeah. Of course, I know it is not for me to share in the joys of Christmas time. I must accept my lot. Well, I... But I'm very happy for you... 
What a heartwarming experience that will be to bring happiness to all those children, to be loved by them and trusted. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, I'd better be getting back. Merry Christmas, Mr. Hemp. Merry. Um, Orville. Yes? You know, it really doesn't mean so much to me, playing Santa Claus. Why don't you take my place? Mr. Hemp. Do you mean that? Sure. Why? I, I don't know what to say. I, I, I can't believe it. I, I can't tell you how happy you've made me. Well, that's what Christmas is for, Orville. To make other people happy. Merry Christmas, Santa Claus. for the second act of our story, Honest Harold, in just a moment. One of the top events of the holiday season, The Bing Crosby Show, heard every Wednesday on most of these same CBS stations. Don't miss this evening's show with Bing, the four Crosby boys, and Dixie Lee, Mrs. Crosby, in their family Christmas program. And be sure to listen for Harold Perry's important announcement at the close of our show. And now, back to Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, there's a nice little glow in the heart of Honest Harold this morning. He gave up his chance to play Santa Claus at the children's Christmas party in order to bring happiness to a lonely old man. And Harold's feeling pretty happy himself. Or at least he was, until he got orders to report to the office of his boss, Stanley Peabody. Him, what's this I hear about you letting that ex-safe cracker take your place as Santa Claus? Oh, you mean Orville? Yes, Hemp, you've done some moronic things in your life, but this time you've broken your record. Well, thank you. Oop. Trusting a man who's been a criminal. I hope you've got all those presents in a safe place. You don't have to worry about the presents, Stanley. I gave them to Oroville last night. They're perfectly safe in his cell. What? He's probably absconded with them by this time. Oh, no. Oroville is reformed, Stanley. He's going straight now. Uh, that's what they all say. But it's pretty hard to break the habits of a lifetime. What? Suppose your Santa Claus decides to crack a safe or something. We'll all be disgraced. Well, you don't have to worry about Orville, Stanley. I know human nature, and I trust him. Well, I don't. Now, Stanley, this means a lot to Orville, and I'm not going to let him down. The trouble with you is you don't have faith in people. Of course, that takes a little intelligence. Hemp, I'll have you understand that intelligence reigns supreme in my family. Oh, well, you must have been born during a dry spell. <laughs> Get out! Don't throw that! I'm leaving. Prissy pants can't worry me. Orville the dip isn't going to crack any safe. I don't think. Oh, hello, Harold. Oh, good morning, Glory. Oh, Harold, I think it's just wonderful you letting Orville take your place as Santa Claus. Well, thanks, Gloria. And I just hope it all comes out all right. What? Well, it'd be awful if he turned out to be another Gentleman Willie. Gentleman Willie? Yes, he was a character in a movie I saw once. He went straight for 30 years, became president of a bank, then his mind snapped. Yeah. It did? Yes. One night they caught him robbing his own bank. He just couldn't break the habit. Zeef. Where are you going, Harold? You haven't heard the rest of the plot. I know it. Goodbye. I wonder if I did make a mistake about Oroville. Suppose his mind snapped. Like Gentleman Willie. The awful if they caught Santa Claus cracking a safe. Oop. There he is. What's he doing? Ah, uh, he's window shopping. Such a sweet face. How could anybody mistrust him? See, what store window was he looking in? Let's see. J.C. Penny, Frank, the group. Whoop! He's window shopping in front of the bank. <laughs> Better see what he's up to. I'll sneak up on him. Fine way to spend Christmas tailing Santa Claus. <laughs> Just walk. Well, hello, Mr. Hemp. Oh, uh, hello, Oroville. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, just reminiscing. Oh? You used to have a lot of fun breaking into these small town banks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet it was a lot of laughs. <laughs> you see, 
see that vault in there through the window? Vault? Yes. I used to open those tin cans with a hairpin. You did? Yes. Got a hairpin on you? Well, I'll get some. <laughs> what? Only joking, Mr. Hemp. <laughs> yes, in the old days, robbing this bank would have been a trifle. Uh -huh. I'd come down here when it's dark, pick the lock on the front door, Whoop. walk in quietly, but shh. Now we come to the vault. We do? I turn the tumblers two to the right, four to the left, yeah. three to the right. Yeah. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> it's open. Uh -huh. Now, I'll put the money in the suitcases. Here, you hold the flashlight. Yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> then I make my getaway. I'm on my way to South America. Oh, Orville, come back. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Hemp. I gave all that up years ago. Oh, <laughs> good. Well, I'd better be going. See you tonight. Yeah, um, goodbye. Oh, oh, oh Mr. Hemp. Uh, here, here's your watch. What? <laughs> it certainly is hard to break a lifetime habit. <laughs> Harold. Yes, Mother? Lie that you're fidgety tonight. Why do you keep looking out the window? Well, I'm waiting for Santa Claus. Oh, isn't that sweet? But Santa won't come until you've gone to bed. And then he'll steal down the chimney. I hope he doesn't steal the chimney. <laughs> what? I'm talking about Oroville, Mother. I'm getting worried. He's supposed to come by and pick me up on the way to the children's Christmas party. Oh, yes, of course. Old Doc Yak Yak let him use his horse and buggy to load the presents in. I can't understand why he's so late. Now, don't worry, son. He'll come skipping by. I hope he hasn't skipped bye-bye. <laughs> it's a good thing Orville is not robbing banks anymore. Ah? Uh -huh. I read in the paper that the lumber company just deposited their biggest payroll today, $20,000. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that would be a wonderful opportunity for a bank robber. <laughs> yeah, sure would. Oh, Harold, uh, the funniest thing happened today. I ran into Orville downtown, and do you know what he asked me for? Hmm? A hairpin. He did? Yes. I wonder what he's going to do with a hairpin. I think I know. <laughs> See you later, Mother. I'm going down to the bank. But, Harold, the bank isn't open. That's what you think. <laughs> Down there in time to stop Orville. Brother, this is awful. Santa Claus, a bank robber. Just hope it's all a mistake. Oop, it's no mistake. There's a horse and buggy in front of the bank. Somebody's coming out of there. Santa Claus, carrying a big bag. Something tells me it's not full of toys. I'm getting in a buggy. Probably off to South America. Santa Claus, just a minute. Santa Claus, come back. Santa Claus! Oh, brother, what a Christmas party this is going to be. Got to tell Pete the Marshal about Oroville robbing the bank. How am I going to explain this to all those little children? I can't tell them Santa Claus is on the lam. <laughs> Uh, their whole Christmas will be ruined. It's all my fault. Thought if I showed Orville I had faith in him and believed in him. Uh, well, I guess I was wrong. <laughs> Listen to those children in there. I'll just peek in the window. <laughs> Look at them. All standing around that big Christmas tree. Nothing on the floor. Waiting for Santa Claus. Think I'll sneak in the side door. <laughs> Hello, Harry. Uh, hello, Doc. Merry Xmas, boy. Uh, hello, Pete. You're late, Hemp. Uh, hello, Stanley. All the children are in the other room. Gloria's having an awful time keeping them quiet. Where's that Santa Claus of yours? Well, fellas, the reindeer, there's something i got to tell you. There's something wrong, Hemp? Well, you see, fellas... All right, Hemp, come to the point. Where's your Santa Claus? Well, here I am. Orville! Oh, my deepest apologies for being late, but I had to stop by the bank. The bank? Yes, I broke in there last night and put the presents in the vault for safekeeping. 
You did? So I had to break in again tonight to get them out. I'm glad nobody saw me and thought I was robbing the bank. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nobody saw you. <laughs> well, you trusted me, Mr. Hemp, and I wasn't going to let anything happen to those presents I had in my cell. Anybody can break into that jail. Yeah. <laughs> You're so right. Well, Sandy Claus, the, the children are waiting. Yes, Orville. The children are waiting for you. What? Uh, oh, oh, yes. Well, here I go. Merry Christmas, children. Oh, Merry Christmas. Oh, it's Daddy Claus. Yeah, this is a Merry Christmas. Fellas, reindeer. Look at all those kids so happy with their toys. Yeah. And look at that little fella playing that drum. Ain't that a doozy? <laughs> Reindeer, it looks like our Christmas party's a big success. Yes, certainly is, Doc. In Oroville. Yes, Mr. Hemp. I certainly want to thank you for being such a wonderful Santa Claus. Mr. Hemp, I can't tell you how much tonight has meant to me. I'll never forget those little children. I'll carry their laughter in my heart as long as I live. And I owe it all to you. Thanks. Thanks very much. Don't mention it, Oroville. And I want to thank you, too. You've taught us all something, that we should never lose our faith in the goodness of people. Oh, Harold, they're all ready for you to sing your Christmas carol. Oh, all right, Gloria, just the way we rehearsed it. Excuse me, Arville. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the king of angels. Oh, come, let us adore. response to my request for presents for the wounded GIs from Korea who were hospitalized at the Travis Air Base. We've already received more than 10,000 gifts, which I'll deliver to the boys when I fly up there to play Santa Claus for them this very weekend. You still have a few days to send in your gifts. Remember, the address is Harold Perry, Post Office Box 150, Los Angeles 53. Harold Perry, Post Office Box 150, Los Angeles 53. Again, let me say thank you. Your gifts will show these wonderful boys how much we appreciate the sacrifices they've made for us. And now, on behalf of all of us on the show, I want to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas. Good night. gentlemen, tomorrow evening, Dennis Day is starring on Suspense, playing a chap who needs money to buy his sick wife a Christmas present. It's a brand new kind of role for Dennis, so don't miss him in Christmas for Carol on Suspense tomorrow evening. On CBS Thursday Night Hallmark Playhouse, you'll hear again the story of how Silent Night came to be written. Stay tuned now for The Bing Crosby Show, which follows immediately on most of these same CBS stations. This is Bob Lamont speaking. The 
This is CBS, where you hear Mr. Chameleon every Wednesday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Born as Jose Pereira de Faria in San Leandro, California, to Portuguese parents, Harold Perry began working in local radio as early as 1923, according to his own memory, and had his own show as a singer, The Spanish Serenader, in San Francisco, but he moved to Chicago, Illinois in 1937. In Chicago, his radio work came to a peak when he became a regular on Fibber McGee and Molly, where he originated the famous Gildersleeve character as a McGee neighbor and nemesis in 1938. The character actually went through several first names and occupations before settling on Throckmorton Philharmonic Gildersleeve. He also worked on the horror series Lights Out and other radio programs, but his success and popularity as Gildersleeve set the stage for the character's own program. The Great Gildersleeve premiered August 31, 1941, and became a steady hit for the rest of the decade. Perry's voice and flustered catchphrases such as, You're a bright boy, Leroy, was a modification of his famous McGee character, and among radio's most familiar sounds. By 1950, however, Perry's run as Gildersleeve was over. With CBS in the middle of a talent raid that had already lured Jack Benny and other NBC stars, Perry was offered a CBS deal of his own. After he had chafed over NBC's and Kraft's reluctance to let him use his singing voice more often on Gildersleeve and to give him more part in the show's ownership than he already had. The problem was that Kraft wasn't willing to make the move with him, and they had a successor ready, Willard Waterman, whose voice resembled Perry's and who had known Perry since the er their early ch Chicago days. Waterman refused to appropriate the famous Gildersleeve laugh, believing Perry alone should have that title to that trademark, but otherwise he slipped easily into the role. Without Perry, however, Gildersleeve struggled on a few, on, for a few more radio years and bombed on television. At CBS, Perry began a new situation comedy, The Harold Perry Show, sometimes known as Honest Harold, a title that was actually the name of the fictitious radio show the new character hosted. Radio veteran Joseph Kearns, later familiar as Mr. Wilson's, uh, Mr. Wilson on television's Dennis the Menace, played veterinarian Dr. Yancey, known better as Dr. Yak Yak, and, resemble, and resembling f former foil Judge Hooker. The new show also b borrowed a few Gildersleeve plot devices, such as running for mayor and engagements to two women. In what was possibly a desperate attempt to recreate the Gildersleeve magic, it even brought in actress Shirley Mitchell, virtually recreating her Gildersleeve role of Leela Ransom, under the name Florabelle Breckenridge. Additionally, Honest Harold's secretary at the radio station, Glory, bears a more than a passing resemblance to Gildersleeve's water department secretary, Bessie. Despite these efforts to recreate the power and ratings of the great Gildersleeve, the Harold Perry show lasted only one season, and that with 38 episodes. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next week.